Welcome back. This is Wild Treasures, getting you acquainted with some of nature's precious gifts. Now, some mango monkeys are very territorial and can spend most of their time and energy defending their home. The dominant male within the troop will often make the boom sound to mark his territory whenever there's an intruder around. In fact, some of their deaths are caused by fighting with other males looking to lead and take over their territory. The unique communication within the troop also allows them to warn each other when a predator arrives. For instance, when an African crown eagle is spotted, a particular sound is made so that the troop can climb down from the trees to camouflage themselves and hide. There is also a different call for when they spot a snake and other threats. Over the years living in Mahuba's Kloof, Paul has learned some of the unique sounds they make. They've got uh, sort of uh, lots of different uh, uh, calls. When you are in the forest, you'll feel, you'll sound uh, the most of the the uh, the one that calls are the males to defend their territory. You'll hear that in the distance, the big boom, mm. and then the other call will say, ah, 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 ah. then uh, sometimes when I do that like this in the forest, they also respond to me. They can communicate with me if I am with uh, the guest and then uh, 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 they want to see the monkey and if we don't see them, if I want to know where they are and then I start doing ah, 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 then they start re responding, then I know that no, they are in this, uh, uh, they are uh, 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 calling from this side, then we go there. You know, walking through the forest trying to look at birds as I'm a bird guide, uh, you sometimes uh, look for those skulking birds and for one to see the skulking bits, you need to be quiet while you're walking through the forest. Quiet. What you can hear is the leaf falling from a tree. Then from the background, you hear this booming sound. Boom! Then you know that the male Samago monkey is around and he's watching what you are doing. But it's not that he's scaring the bits away. It's just that he's doing what he's supposed to do, securing his territory. The mango monkeys tend to have fun amongst each other in the way they play, but also have a weird way of upsetting an unwanted guest. What they do to people sometimes when you f you're going through the forest, you get to a point where the monkey is sitting above you in a tree, hiding away from you. Then while you're looking, trying to admire the bait which you're looking at, then you just hear this shower of pee coming over into your, onto your head, you know that a monkey is there. So it makes it unique, it just makes you to feel that you are in nature, anything can happen. Whenever one is walking in the forest, precautions such as not looking up with your mouth open should be taken. As I described, I was um, doing a genetic study and um, what I needed to do is collect the droppings of the monkeys for that. Obviously, I didn't want to be invasive and get blood or whatever. So through, through the droppings of monkeys, you can get the DNA. And so I went dropping hunting, um, which I have done for the past four years. And it's something many scientists end up doing is looking at the droppings of animals for all kinds of things. And it wasn't always easy to find these droppings, as you can imagine. Um, <laughs> and the one time, I remember I had put my backpack down and I saw the monkeys feeding in a, in a big fig tree similar to this one and um, I kept hearing where the droppings were falling down so I went with my collection vials and scooped it all up and as I returned back to my backpack and wanted to put it on there was this perfect sort of dropping on top of my backpack that was ready to scoop into my, into my backpack and then um, take it home into the lab and look at the DNA. So that was, <laughs> that was, that was quite convenient, yeah. Just like in some cultures, humans have different beliefs. Monkey calls can also mean something different. Yeah, there are lots of things about monkeys, you know, in our 
uh, our, in our culture, there's lots of things in monkeys. Some of them, like me, I, uh, my totem is a, a baboon. So uh, uh, when we hear, when uh, uh, we hear the monkey, I mean a baboon calling when we are at home, it means that uh, that day we won't eat. Because of this, uh, we belong that uh, uh, is uh, uh, calling is from, uh, uh, is one of the call from our ancestors. We believe in that. In, you know, uh, we African people, we do have the, uh, uh, the superstition and the traditional belief and all sorts of things. The mango monkeys may be listed as least concerned on the IUCN red data list, but in South Africa there is a growing concern on their numbers. With all the challenges faced by this species, Bibi and her team, along with the Endangered Wildlife Trust, have devised a plan to eliminate road killings. By creating and designing safe crossing bridges to help the monkeys cross without the risk of getting hit by a car. The plan is still in its developing stages, but can hopefully take off with the help of the Department of Transport. Um, we've had several different projects that were based on Lejuma. Um, one of them was looking much broader nationally. So we looked at the taxonomy of the Samango monkeys because there have been issues with the subspecies as a two or three. And we looked at that and we found at the end that in the area here where we are, we've got a, a third subspecies, which used to be described in the 1930s and was then dropped and we revived that. Um, so that's included in the new red data list as well that's coming out with a separate conservation and management plan for that subspecies. So that's been very exciting. We found that in the past four years on a particular road um, that there were 17 monkeys that have been killed by, by collisions with cars and 11 of them were adults, which is, um, is concerning, uh, of big concern to us. And um, in response to that problem with the road collisions, we started a project on the Juma um, testing different bridge designs, which at the end will help us to design a bridge that can be put over a national road to help the Samangos cross safely. And that's been a lot of fun to see how these monkeys are reacting to these man-made structures. So we've got several here on the property that the, the monkeys have to cross once a day. Through the research and the genetic testing that have been done, a third species that was thought to be extinct has since been rediscovered and one can only hope that they can be conserved. The population uh, could be declining but not at a tremendous amount. What could be done is for many for the new farmers to avoid lots of electric, electric fencing around the farms because that boundaries the movement of the monkeys and the monkeys you know they live without limits and the whole different troops has to interbreed once you start fencing and they all in dif in the groups are staying at the same place and they start breeding interbreeding to themselves that is going to have a big problem eventually it will affect the full population we also looked at human wildlife conflict and at direct threats to samango monkeys and the forest and one direct impact is road kills, which we found further in the eastern part of the mountain. Um, and we've so far in the past four years, we've lost 17, or we found 17 monkeys dead on the road, and then 11 of them were adults, which is obviously um, very of, of, of big concern to us. Um, and so on Lejuma, we've started a project on testing bridges that go across roads to help some mango monkeys crossing tar roads, so the national roads, safely. And so uh, we've been involved with that for a year now. And this has been a lot of fun because we've exper been experimenting with constructing bridges and seeing what the monkeys are doing. And so uh, that's been a lot of fun. It 
is still unclear how many Samanga monkeys are left in the country, but judging by the lack of forest regions in South Africa, the population is not great. There is also the growing fear of inbreeding, which will affect the monkeys in the long run, should they be restricted to just one area. Despite the many challenges faced by this species, we simply cannot give up efforts to help preserve this unique, cute and fluffy animal. Uh, we do have quite a lot. We've got a couple of troops. Some troops have got up to 20 members in them. And through the forest, definitely there, there is quite a good number of monkeys. I couldn't really specify amount, but there's a good population. Very important is that awareness. People, many people in South Africa don't know that Samango monkeys are in the country um, because not many people live in areas where you have indigenous forest. As I, as I mentioned, there are few areas in the country um, that have got these forests and so a lot of people don't know that the Samango monkey exists. So a large part of the work we are doing as well is reaching out to communities, newspaper articles, we've designed stickers for cars saying I break for Samango monkeys, um, we give talks for the public um, just to create an awareness that there is this monkey, that it's very special. They have a, a big impact on it so there's a it is, it's, it's not easy to ensure um, the overall protection of the forest as long as we have got so many different entities and stakeholders involved in, in owning or, or safeguarding um, the forest. So that is a big issue that needs to be looked at. And that's all we have for you today. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same place, as we get you acquainted with South Africa's wildlife heritage. From me, Stefani Hansen van Vuren, cheers.